Hi guys, welcome back to the shop, the mini machine shop. I'm Dave. I was just thinking about the last video that I did and just some of the things that I had seen going on with the uh, mini mill, mini Dave. Every time I go to drill, I always saw the drill bit deflect, trying to find some center or something. I, you know, I could never get the tail stock right. And I'm starting to wonder, you know, why is eyeballing uh, with the 10XI loop, the tail stock method I just described in the last video, why am I getting better results with that over the coaxial indicator, which is accurate to a half thousandth easy? And I just realized you answered your own question in your video. I was using the three jaw chuck to hold the coaxial indicator. So I'm aligning the tail stock to some center of the chuck, not the true center of rotation. So by doing the other method with the eye loop, I'm so magnified in there that if I can't, I, I can see the center and uh, how am I going to explain this? <laughs> well, if you can't, if you're that magnified and you got it lined up so close that you're not going to see the movement with the naked eye. So I'm probably still off maybe a thousand, two thousands in using the eyeball method um, that the drill bit, you, you just don't see it deflect. I mean, it, it goes right in and it's perfect. What I should have done was machined apart so I know the surface is concentric or whatever you want to call it to the center of rotation, the actual center, and then put the coaxial indicator in the tailstock. But I think you're still going to have some error because of whatever run out is in the chuck that's holding the coaxial indicator in the tailstock, you're still going to have some error there. But So eyeballing it seems to work really good, but I answered my own question, I'm doing it wrong. Um, what else is going on here? Um, got a new addition to the machine shop. I put a picture of it up on the website towards the end. It's a Craigslist find Kennedy 5D. Brand new. The guy wanted $55 for it, so he get it to me. It fits in there perfectly. And for a teeny box, it holds an awful lot of stuff. It completely emptied one of my trays. And these things hold a lot of stuff too. <laughs> one drawer emptied a whole tray. So one drawer's got all the, um, oh yeah, put everything in little baggies now too and label them. Oh, wrong drawer to do that too. There we go. So I can just pull out of one compartment all the little baggies and get these off of Amazon. And it's like a hundred of them for five dollars, ten dollars or something. Made labels so I can pull out. Here's my 832 uh, 832s, 864s, 848s, whatever. All of them are there. So one drawer has got all the metric and imperial set screws. Same drawer has all the imperial and metric cap screws. Another drawer has got all, um, what is it saying? I forgot already. <laughs> uh, all the metric bolts. That's right. I wanted to mention that. You go to Harbor Freight, which I did a long time ago, and you get their assortment of metric nuts and bolts and lock washers. And they're not that nice. I mean, the nuts don't even have the holes in the center. They wobble and tighten them. Um, but that was a set I had bought when I started. And that whole set's in here. But I did find on Amazon, there's a, a company called Trades Pro. It's one word. And they've got a whole metric nut bolt assortment and they're just beautiful. Uh, I'll just pull one giant nut out, but they're machined perfectly. They're really, really nice. And it's the same set, but it's really nice. So if you look up Trades Pro, it's eight bucks for the assortment. They also have an assortment of nylon lock nuts, which I bought for nine dollars. And that whole set's in here. But I've got all my extra taps in there and nice little baggies labeled and a bunch of miscellaneous stuff, extra cutters and mills and things that I've got. And all my inserts are in the bottom drawer. Okay. So that's that. Um, the other thing I've been searching for is the dovetails for 
um, test indicators. I've been searching a long time and you would think that this is all over the place and really inexpensive and you just can't find them. When you find them it's the thirty dollars, it's from Starrett or something. I finally took a chance, uh, found the right wording, it's called Dovetail Stem, and found one place on Amazon, ordered it, they were five dollars each, bought two of them in five dollars shipping, got them, and the groove is too wide. <laughs> it doesn't even hold on a test indicator, you can't get it to tighten up. So um, I contacted the company and they said they checked their inventory and they're sorry. Gave me a full refund and they threw their whole all their inventory in the trash can. So they said throw them away. I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but it's an incredibly unique thread that's on them too. Extremely fine. I can't even find a tap for it, so it's not usable. So tree. Oh, no, I already said trees, bro. I'm losing my mind. Um, so that's the dust in. Oh, and on that, I had looked at one time trying to find a um, small dovetail cutter. Yeah, big, where's the big guys? There's the big guys that you guys have seen me use. I tried to find one small enough that I could make my own, and they're there, but they're $70, $80, and I'm not going to spend that kind of money. So I started, this is the W1 Water Horton Tool Steel. And I've already started making kind of a dovetail on it. So one of these videos I'm going to finish this. I'll put it in the Spindex. And if you go on ClickSpring, you'll see he makes one himself and pretty successful at it for cutting um, what it's called the Impossible Cube or something like that. The Impossible Dovetail Cube. So I just got to try to cut the dovetails. And if I can do that and get it sharp enough, Hopefully all I have to do is just cut aluminum. I'm not going to make them out of steel. I could probably try hardening this, but the amount of work that I put into this thing, I'm not about to dull it on steel. So that's that. Now, last thing, I guess, I'll talk about this toy. So let me bring the camera over and zoom in a little bit closer. All right, there's the guy. I had to change the angle here because the sun is reflecting off of it too much on the other side. This was, I've always been looking at this thing, you can find them, uh, they're $25, you can find it on Amazon, you can find it on Newegg, a bunch of places, and I figured, you know, what the heck, because the end mills when you're trying to face off, always leaves this weird looking pattern, it's super flat, it's clean, but it's got a visual type pattern to it, you can't feel it. So this is a face mill, and I was hoping that this was going to give me a lot better results, and it turned out no. Um, so this came from Amazon, $25. The cutters were $19. You get a tray of 10 of them. And I could not find an arbor. Nobody had an arbor for it. So, Well, actually, I did find one. It was $66, so forget that. So the first arbor I built... Um, it's not that difficult really, you can get the dimensions, by the way the dimensions for this on the internet are incorrect, so you got to measure it yourself. But here we go, Blue Angels. Um, made this guy and put it in there and did some turning and the finish was just awful, I couldn't understand the finish. So I checked this on the granite surface and yeah I did have some run out on it. So I made another one here, really, really precise. This was actually one piece. I had turned um, this section, then this, and then this, and then cut it off and finished the face on it. And this is actually pressed in there. And it has zero run out on it. And I ran the surface again, and I still get a total mess. Where is the piece? Here it is. I don't know if I can angle it with the right light so I'll just try a bunch of different angles and it's just the weirdest patterns you've ever seen even on the edges I, I don't understand why it's doing this so I started looking at the uh, inserts and turns out every insert has a chip in it so I don't know what this guy is uh, 
and you should look him up too to caution people not to buy it from this person because he's giving me the runaround on a refund. Uh, every one of them was chipped and I even sent them pictures of it and so they're saying you know to reduce my losses how about we refund you 50 percent that's like no my not my losses your losses because they want me to mail it back to China like I'm not paying for shipping to China but the cutters the surfaces are terrible they're not even sharp on the edges there's chips in them and I've managed to eye loop and find four of them that actually had the best surfaces without a chip <clears throat> and I still get a mess for a finish so this is like a $50 or $45 mess uh, I just write it off as an experiment the other thing was I did put this on the surface and this thing is precise there is zero movement on any of these surfaces it's machined perfectly fine but in just rotating this thing it sounded like only one cutter was working and only one cutter had chips on it and so I put a test indicator on it and sure enough one guy is four thousandths out so he's the only one doing the cutting so I just removed that guy and now you can hear three of them just whacking away at it but it's still a mess so what I learned is this mill many mills are not equipped for big toys big cuts like this the whole machine just vibrates too much. You, the smaller the cut, the single cut, like the fly cutter that I use, gives gorgeous, gorgeous finishes. Even the three-quarter end mill, it starts vibrating the machine so much that I can't, I don't really get a good finish on facing, but I do on surfacing. So the three-quarter running it over the surface will give me a gorgeous finish, but facing it is kind of a push, a uh, half-inch end mill versus the three-quarter end mill. They both give me the same. Um, yeah, here's the yeah. It was here's the even the box Mitsubishi. It was sealed, so this is supposed to be high quality, and it's not. Let me quickly look up. Oh, it was Eddie Store, E D D I S T O R. One word. Not a company I'm going to be buying from again, uh, especially when they give you this kind of run around on Amazon. So. Um, that's my two cents worth. I think that's everything that I wanted to share today. So, see you guys next time.